All right, we're live, Martha. Where are we at? We are at Dallas. The Southwest RV Super Show, day one in Dallas. That's right. We are out here with uh, our good friend Ryan from Miller's in Motion. And we're getting ready to do a tour of the coach that he's full timing in. When I'm not broking it, breaking it. Broking it. <laughs> English is a difficult language. Long day. Long day, all the brokens. <laughs> Okay, go quick, I can pull it over Gee. So All right, so we're getting ready to go around, and uh, Ryan and his beautiful bride, Lauren, they are full-time in Grand Design. She is not she here, is but he is going to give us a walkthrough so we can figure out exactly what in the bleep it is and why he chose. So let's start. Introduce yourself, Ryan. Talk to us. Hold on, Ryan. Oh, wait, hold on. Martha wants to hand over. I'm Ryan. All right, so we have audio. Introduce yourself. Who are you, Ryan? I'm Ryan, like you just said. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Hi, Ryan. This is awesome. Jesus. My name is Ryan. Hi, my name Oh my gosh. I'm going to so, stop talking now. I apologize, I'm guys. There's some tired. people's children are just a mess. I'm a grown man child. <laughs> Very grown. Uh, no, I'm Ryan. We have a channel called Millers in Motion. We also full time our brand design 390 RK, otherwise known as we're about to look at. So if I just sit down in my spot, don't make it. That's <laughs> right. Have so we're, die hard. I, I, we're really curious to know why did he chose Grand Design over a different brand or, you know, why specifically this model? So we're going to have who better to do it than somebody that's living in it. So let's go on a tour and go through. Maybe. <laughs> oh, we're still live. I forgot. All right. What is this supposed to mean? So it means hurry oh, up. People front. got all day. They don't want to hear it. So. <laughs> Which model are we in front of? Uh, so this is the Solitude 390 RK. It's about a 44 foot fifth wheel uh, with a GVW of about 16,800 pounds. Uh, it's one of the biggest Solitudes Grand Design makes. So, so what was it for you that sold you on this model? Why Grand Design and why this particular one? Um, Grand Design, it's two different answers. <laughs> uh, Grand Design a lot like Alliance. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Incoming! Yeah. Um, someone hopefully is inside. Um, so Grand Design, a lot like Alliance, kind of stands on the pillar of customer service. Had a, heard a lot of really good things. And so we kind of went with it initially, found our dealer here in North Texas that we wanted to work with. Uh, and then as far as this model, well, I mean, one of them is right here. Because that's kind of an insane amount of storage. Yeah, that is massive. And this is a rear kitchen model, which you see, you'll see you see when we go inside. Yeah. So this is directly under the rear floor and man, you're right. I, I believe you said earlier when we were talking to some people that were here that you'll overfill your weight before you overfill your storage capacity. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> All right, so let's walk around the outside. Give us some of yep. the highlights. So obviously the huge storage and the set down spot, there's another camper in the way, so we can't really get there flatbed or whatever that is. Um, but there's actually a more ride train down there as well that'll pull out of the back. This is what he's talking about. So if you happen to have anything like kayaks, boy, you are in good shape. That's huge. Well, and one thing too is they put a divider up here, but it's a mesh divider, so it can pop right off. So you can actually extend that storage through here if you needed to. Uh, in case you're curious, if you get up really fast and slam your head in the side of this, it could cause a concussion. You wouldn't be speaking from experience, would you? No, no. You wouldn't know no. that guy. <laughs> So it's a unique floor plan in the sense that the kitchen's in the back. There's not a ton of campers that do that. Living room in the middle, so you've got the big opposing slides. Another big side for us is typically when you get a big storage bay in the back, you don't really get one up front. Well, you get a pretty big one in the front too. That is a massive pass through. It yep. looks, and it's got a ready back, huh? So you guys have a vacuum system built into it? Yeah, ours is called Dyson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we added another one because uh, we have dogs and we need a little more sucking power. I don't suck quite enough. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. One of the cool mods I actually did is all your TV satellite hookups are on this side, but this is an unsupported wall. Why they do that, I don't know. Um, this is a supported wall being in the front, so I actually added the Morai TV tray. We have a nice big TV that flips out so we can watch football outside, and when Lauren gets annoyed with me, I go outside. <laughs> so that's kind of like we would call the uh, dungeon. Gotcha. <laughs> and is there anything special up front about it? Is that just your normal uh, storage? So up? normal storage. This one does not have the generator prep. It does have. It does have the residential package. So it's going to have two AGM batteries in there. 
plus you've got that solar charge control that you've only on the left. So there is one 300 amp on this unit. We have the same setup. So we have one 300. I like to call it just enough to think you got solar. You know, one of the things I want to point out that I think is really cool, one, that it comes with a, a Moride pen box, yep. but two, it actually has a built-in LED light. We've been talking about that. That is a really nice option yes. when you're hooking up at night. So that light is controlled not just by here. It also gets the cap lights up top, and there is some underbelly lighting right here. It's all controlled by that guy. Now, now is it multicolor or is it all just white? All just white. All right. We're not as fancy. All right, so what's this whole thump here thing? Talk to me about this. Um, it's a sticker that says thump here and you bang Perfect. it. Perfect. And what's the benefit <laughs> of banging on a wall? So it's a fully laminated side, fully laminated side wall. It's more common now, but back when Grand Design started building, that was a much less common thing. Gotcha. Um, to have this fully laminated. So now when you bang on it, it actually is a solid piece. Oh, like no, a no, non-fully laminated. Perfect. So. Uh, what's your thoughts on the frameless windows? Living in it, do you guys like They're it? frameless. That's my thought. <laughs> but do you get good breeze? Is there a decent pass through? Um, or? With this unit, yes, because of how they did it. Um, but if we just open the frameless, it's okay. Not, it's not the greatest thing. <laughs> she changed I have on ADHD us. so bad, you can't do that to me. <laughs> we had a squirrel. So the frameless, he's talking about the frameless windows. And as you can tell, yep. they pop out. So that's one of the cool things about them. It's one, they cosmetically look really nice, right. but they pop out, so, so you can't get a breeze on them. I would say, when it's raining, it's kind of handy to be able to crack those a little bit if it's not too humid, which it's Texas, so it's 50-50 shot of being 100% or free. <laughs> yeah. So. If you're just tuning in now. Perfect. So if you're tuning in right now, we're going through the solitude. Wait, wait, wait. ST390RK residential package and Miller's in Motion is giving us a tour because he is full timing with his beautiful bride yep. in this. So let's go inside. Everybody wants to know the business end yep. of things. Oh, my butt. <laughs> Got to fill the good side. Wow. Actually, this is the first time I've walked in. We haven't walked in. So, yeah. True to this. True story, guys. We literally have not walked in it. We were talking with Ryan. Was like, let's go live on this because you live in it. You could walk us through it. Leave a comment in the chat where you're watching from. All right. Let us know where you at, and if you happen to be in anywhere around Dallas, come say hi. We're over at the RV Super Show. So they're Next. not here to look at us. They want to know what we're talking about. So walk us through the living room here. This is pretty freaking awesome. Right next to you. What? Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so mid living. I know that's a little different from a lot of different things, but a lot of different rigs. Um, two opposing slides. These are um, rack and pinion hydraulic slides. Did you get that right? I think I got yes. it right. Um, what our big appeal was is the space where Martha's standing right now is actually in the kitchen, and so it does. Even though it's very separated with a stair system and the couch and how it's done, it also is still very included. So realistically, if I wanted to have a ton of people over. I don't. Um, <laughs> but if I did, one, two, it. three, four, five, six, I could fit eight people sitting down inside this rig. Important and question. Was, how comfortable are they? One it's the not bad. It's not. I had a lazy boy home that was way better, but it's gotcha. uh, not. It's it's middle of the road. So it's nothing. You we are not switching them out. Let me Perfect. rephrase that. Okay, there you I go. I also have a lot of padding. <laughs> so, do you find that the the fireplace does a good enough job that knocking the temperature down? You don't yeah, have to run a furnace too much. So we we barely run our furnace. Again, the insulation in my body takes care of most of that. Lauren's cold constantly. I'm sweating all the time. It's fun. Uh, it smells like bacon too. If you're curious. <laughs> um, so yeah. So obviously it's got a furnace. Ours has a heat pump on the middle or the main AC as well. We barely use the furnace unless it gets below about 40 degrees. Then we'll crank the furnace on. So. Um, really, my biggest concern of why we use the furnace is actually the um, storage bays. So there's forced air and heat, or forced heat, gotcha. down into the rear and forward bays where the tanks are. So <coughs> if it's below freezing, we won't really, we have to be careful about cranking it up too high because we'll sweat out, but we also want to make sure we keep our underbelly above freezing so we don't have the fun Nice. <laughs> so let's go to the magic. This is where the magic happens, right? No, this is where the magic happens. No, no, the magic happens up here. <laughs> You so, are the result of the magic. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're very right. So this was the big selling factor for us. Um, I know it's hard to believe we enjoy food. Um, me way more than Lauren. Lauren actually likes to bake. I like to smoke and pretty much cook anything else. In Lauren's world, I cook real food, and she cooks diabetes. Um, so 
Um, but with this huge kitchen, it's it became one of those things, you know, we found ourselves at a lot of rigs going, we can make this work, we can make that work. We were just talking about this earlier, Chris. Yes. In this rig, we didn't have to make anything work. To be honest, we have a lot of empty storage up here because we downsized too much. So um, I guess kind of start over here and I'll just open stuff for you. Perfect. So. So is that your pantry then? This is the pantry. I like the so, drawers. That's a nice setup. So it, what's funny is apparently at some of you they did an update. We have four of those. <laughs> oh. So they're just closer together. We have four of the exact same size. I don't know why they changed that. Um, plus you've got vertical storage on the left um, as well. And then the full pantry, I can tell you, we fit plenty in there. Um, it was nice. They pre-installed lights. That was the first thing my wife said was please put a light in there. And I said, there you go. You're welcome. Perfect. Flip the switch for it. Looks like it's got a residential oven and stove yep. set up. So have you so done any baking or? Lauren has. I've eaten a lot that's come out of it. So you're happy <laughs> with the way it works? Yeah, actually been very happy. Um, we heard a lot about the kind of RV oven and talking about trying to disperse the heat better. We have had zero issues with this kind of sight unseen. So we've done nothing to it as far as mods and it's doing its job, which is all I ask. Yeah, and the residential fridge in the back. I like the sink yep. right here. This gives you a good workspace. I like the counters. It does, to be honest with you. There's so much counter space in this rig. We ditched these. We didn't even keep them because we really didn't need them. So you're um, looking directly out the back of the coach right now. So yep. you've got a huge window, so you get a lot of natural light when yep. you're parked. So, and again, just an absolute ton of storage. So what we've done is we RV with three large dogs. So we installed a slider that comes out, our trash cans there, a slightly bigger one than the one they give you because, again, lots of food particles coming out. Um, we actually put another one over here and actually use it for our dog food. Oh, just wow. to make life a little easier. So yeah. that, and then this is kind of like our dog cabinet up here. It's really weird being in here because it's like mine, but not really. Is that a, that is the microwave convection or it's is not? It, it's um, just a standard microwave. It's a, so when they started doing the Insignia ovens, the bigger ones, they just went back to the standard. I'm sure to save a little bit of money, but it's, I mean, again, between the two things, we've not, we have yet to have an issue. So, so. Uh, dishwasher, no dishwasher in the oven? Dishwasher prepped. Gotcha. So if you want it, so you want to spend the money. It, in fact, if you want to spin this way, just to add to the fun storage. Um, so that's completely open. That's where the dishwasher would go. Um, you would lose the upper if you put a dishwasher in, but you'd retain the lower. All right, for those of you guys that just joined, we are at the RV Super Show in Dallas, Texas. We're here with Ryan from Miller's of Motion. Martha's down there saying hi. And we're doing a tour of the grand design um, that he actually, him and his wife, are full-timing in. So let us know in the comments where you're from, where you're watching from. I'm going to show you something. Flip back over. He's going to show us something. <laughs> You're just in my way now, buddy. <laughs> that so can happen. We, this was the, uh, I always joke about this, but if you run into a, a, a fun whoopsie, so many times in the RV world, we're like, oh, crap, a leak. God, oh, crap, this. You know, bad things happen when you get the unannounced. This wall was very surprising. It's textured. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, hang on. There we go. So if you notice, there's some cubbies down here, really just entertainment cubbies with, you know, kind of glancing at it, just like we thought. There's nothing that special about it, except for, just real quick, if you look here, I can put my arm on an elbow and it disappears. So I call this area the void. I don't know if that's actually something we're calling it, but so on the other side of this is there's a little bit of storage here, but on the back side is the shower uh, in the bathroom up the next set of stairs. There's about four and a half to five inches of just nothing space back here. And my first thought was, why are we wasting space like that? And then it dawned on me, well, wait a minute. If I'm going to install internet, if I'm going to install all these other things that require power, require wires to be run to and from, I'm just going to measure to the top of my roof. So like we installed a, a Parsex Husky 7-in-1 MIMO antenna for our internet package. We actually drilled it right here. It dropped down. The cords literally landed after one hole right on top of our router that we put here because there's power down there too. Fantastic. So it made installing a lot of kind of accessories very handy and way la lazier for me, which is perfect. So. <laughs> so when you leave the, now we're heading up to the bedroom? Uh, you can if you want. Oh no, let's start, oh, all the electronics. Yep, so, so all electronics. Switches. Yep, toggle switches. There are five slides. There are four slides. Oh yeah, there's five slides on this. Um, the main slide being the dual sense, it's hydraulic. They go at the same time. So in the living room, and then there's valves in the front propane bay that you can close one. Do you have the Lippert system on yep, yours? Yep, we do. It's the Lippert LCI. We have the slightly smaller screen. They've upgraded that since then. To be honest, we don't use it. Just use the tallest switches? We use the manual and the phone app. Gotcha. Those are the things we really use. Um, 
this is just a coat closet. And there's another one up here that opens the other way. So we use these as exactly that. It's our coat closet. So I have the lower one because it's a little well, it's a little longer, and I'm a little bit girthier than Lauren. So um, I need a little extra length. But we leave all our coats up there. I did notice when we were RV shopping that you either get a tiny bathroom or a massive bathroom. There's no like in between. So for us, this is really why a big reason why we picked it. You still get dual sinks. Do we really use them? I mean, yeah, we do, but it's just kind of a habit. Um, but you still get dual sinks. You still get the great shower enclosure. So I'm 6'2", 300 pounds, and I'm nowhere near. So six foot two, fit in there, plenty of arms, legs. Yep. It's got a teak seat, nice adjustable. Uh oh, hold Hi. on, I'm Hi, being camera. paged. <laughs> oh, you're back this way. So uh, we're back this way. So yeah, again, we're both six foot two. This is turning into a weird show. Two this days is in the shower. <laughs> it ain't that kind of party. <laughs> All right, but, but this is a nice easy. bathroom. You got a ton of storage in the bathroom. You yep. got a medicine cabinet on both sides of the wall. Yep. So Lauren's mine. Uh, Lauren's Lauren's mostly Lauren's a little bit me. Lauren's one of my towels because I'm lucky enough to have a towel, and then I get a cubby in the very far back. See that corner? That's okay. So you have, and so as far as the bathroom goes, you guys got a ton of storage. Yep. That's kind of the theme of this one. There's a ton of storage. Yeah, now I guess that goes back to what you were saying we were talking about earlier is that you're going to go over weight before you go over space. Yep. And that was not a fat joke. <laughs> no, not at all. So Kind of a fat joke. <laughs> so this is the first thing. They did a mid-model switch up on us. Our closet system does not look like that. Gotcha. So this is a, so this closet system here with all the... Right. Is all and new. Now we're back in frame again. Hi, Mir. Hi, Mir. So we have the more traditional, if you've watched any video for, what, no week? Um... <laughs> So if you've watched any other videos or you've seen maybe our video, it's we have the more traditional sliding door and then we have the pocket door that's kind of cockeyed right there in the corner. And we have a combo, a splendid combo washer dryer. We didn't want the stackable. You could put a stackable with a little. Um, the two things we didn't, we wanted one, but we didn't want the weight of two. And then we also wanted to keep a little bit of storage. So Lauren uses the top for a lot of her work clothes and riding clothes and all that kind of stuff. And then we split the main storage for us so this is new to me i'm not used to seeing this this is weird it's a nice setup but it's got it's got your uh, house plugs it's yep. got 12 volt usb yep. so you got usb a 12 volts and then you've got end tables over the top yep. of the bed and you have same padded. power on this side as well and you've got padded back so this is lauren's favorite feature and she'd kill me if i didn't do it oh wow so it's a little ottoman she uses it all the time more importantly shoe storage Oh, very nice. Oh, that's really out. cool. So, and then obviously you have traditional underneath there, so you have a low rise there. The ottoman slides underneath it. Can you sit on the ottoman? Is it uh, safe to be sat on? Most people can. I probably shouldn't. Lauren does every day. I am no problems there, and you got well, you got a ton of storage. Yep. So, what model is this again, Ryan? For the seventh time, Chris. Got to get a lot of people know, man. We got to know. <laughs> so it's the Grand Design Solitude 390 RK. I forget we're live and not shooting a video. This is new for me. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about the ACs. How loud are they, and or how quiet are so they? So it's the Coleman Mach 2 units. Um, I don't. Oh, it's Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's not. It's the right amount of white noise for me. I don't know how to explain that. That's a weird thing, but I like a little bit of noise. We run the ACs most of the time during. Well, we run this AC most of the time during the night. Um, it's. The Coleman Mach 2, I don't know the decibel rating. Sorry. Yeah, no, you don't need the, but from us, you can have a conversation, it's not annoying. Oh, like absolutely. We, we had a model, I don't remember what it was in our first trailer, our Heartland oh, North Trail, like and that off. thing sounded like an airplane taking off. Yep. You couldn't hear anything. And it's got some not so secret storage on yeah. the top of there. Don't steal my stuff, it's under there. Yep, and then of course, dresser drawers. If you open ours up, it's just full of remotes you don't know what to do with. <laughs> yeah, because we keep stuff on top. We keep a dehumidifier on top of it. Lauren has show you what you guys got going on back here. So this is the way it's mounted. All the electrical and everything is tucked in behind. Yep, nice setup. And this is one of those weird things too that I don't know why, but I noticed this. But if you open a drawer in a grand design, they actually put solid wood down there. Not particle board. Not particle board, which right, is handy because so, I so, push it to its limits. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make this hard on Ryan. We're Four. live. What? Still? What, what sucks? about this unit oh Bye, <laughs> i was about to say i just turned on the ac back here you can't Did you really hear. yeah 
AC's on. Oh, all right, well, we don't turn the AC on in the show. It'll make wet. And, and we're gonna go into that part. Let's go in the living room. Just all right, let's. This. All right, we're not gonna let you off. You don't, don't, don't try to pull the sail switcheroo on me here, Ryan. What sucks? Yeah, it's on. Oh, I've got two or three things that aren't my favorite about. This I'm gonna tell mine. To all right, so you here. tell me what. You tell me what sucks. So, right from the gates, the seven K axles. I think you would agree with that. Um, our biggest issue with this rig is that you don't have a lot of cargo carrying capacity. So the 8K axles, if knowing what I know now, I would have no brainer that one. Okay. Um, I also have to order one. Start ordering it with 8Ks. Um, <laughs> well, it, it's no different cost wise doing it after Take the fact. Diana also, and hide you know. it right. Two different people. But I'm being told by Martha. Hello, Diana. Hi, Diana. I don't okay. know what's happening. Okay. Say hi to Ken. I can't hear you, Martha. Hi, Kent. Hello, Kent. Kent. Sorry, Martha's saying that you're saying hi. Hi, Diana, and hi, Kent. My apology. Yeah, it's all right, so what sucks? We can't hear you over Hunter. So this is Hunter. He actually happens to be the sales guy that was... Um, Unfortunate. That, I mean, lucky enough to... That <laughs> sell to Ryan. We didn't plan this. He happened to just walk in since we're an RV show. So you tell me what sucks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you come to me on the day oh. of my RV show asking me for a favor, hey, asking hey, me... Hey, oh, hey. I mean... There we go. We fixed it. Perfect. And so personally, I think that the 390 RK, in terms of a full timing rig, if you're on the road constantly, part of it is, the, I mean, the cargo carrying capacity, but also the balance of the seat of the bus is the back. Yeah. I'm just very mindful whenever I talk to customers about custom tailoring their right floor plan that, hey, if you're wanting to be on the road 365 days out of the year, this might not be the floor plan for you. You might, because again, unless you have plastic plates, you're just not moving very often, you secure everything in the back, it can have a lot of balance. You know, it's the balance of the seat of the bus. Beyond that, I mean, I I get a lot of feedback that it should have a second half bath, but then I, I disagree. But I point out to people, where would you put it? You would right. sacrifice so much usable space in other areas. I mean, personally, I think that it has some of the most pass-through storage. And in terms of things that uh, you you've actually lived in, and so what what don't you like? I mean, overall? I, I I agree with the bounciness, but just like everything else, you take precautions. We mm -hmm. use tension rods to hold drawers in um, in other spots and do other things. Uh, I was telling Chris, we use the fancy china, the papel, I think is what they call it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> easy to clean up. Yeah, so we don't, I mean, we do have some real plates, and we just go out of our way to make sure that we brace them when we when we are in transit. So. Yeah. And I think that's just a reality of any time you're in transit with an RV, period, any of the fifth wheels. I mean, R340 is the same way. Stuff bounces around. We have, we have tension rods. We have to be mindful. It's right. just the reality of running down the road is things can bounce around. So what's your favorite thing about it? Um, I, the living space. To be, I mean, I know that's a really broad and I love this kind of large thing. Yeah. So this for me is my my favorite. Thing. We we so told Hunter that we're not a big fan of dinettes, but we really want somewhere to sit and uh, and be able to work and actually sit down for a meal. We're not big on eating on the couches and that kind of stuff. Right. With Lauren and I, we like to sit and have a meal without the TV on. I know we face the TV, but for the most part, unless we're watching events or some couple video. We don't. Hey, shout out to Ventures and Couple. Um, we, we, we don't turn the TV on when we eat, but and it, when it goes away, that left side becomes my office. And right. I was telling Hunter, this is like bizarre land. I kind of want to just go sit in my spot and work a little bit, but what the hell? Why is this in my rig? Yeah, I would say from a from a walk around tour standpoint, I agree with you. I actually I was gonna point out to me that, that seating area, dining area that is up at the back towards the front of the kitchen, I think is fantastic because. From a workstation standpoint, you can actually use the television as a monitor if you wanted to. Good. And then, like with us using Apple TV, yes. we can broadcast from our iPad to the TV. Martha, you walked through this for the first time. What do you like? Here you go. I already got that. I like how big it is in here, and it's light colored. I like the light dark wood. Uh, Incliner's nice, TV's nice, fireplace. It's nice and big in here, and I do like the kitchen aisle, or what would you call it? Uh, I call it the counter. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you want yeah, to call it, but the bar, bar. counter. I like that because you could sit there and actually watch TV, or you can cook a meal and still watch TV. That's kind of nice. Well, and, you know, before we actually went live or when we came up here, but it's yeah. we can sit a lot of people in here, and you still feel, except for these people having the turn to look at those people, um, we could put eight people seated comfortably in here, and still have a, and everybody feel like they're in the conversation still, even though the two people are potentially elevated. Or, uh, like one of my biggest complaints is when I'm cooking or Lawrence baking or whatever, 
you feel very disconnected sometimes in RVs um, or houses, and for that matter. And this is not bad. You have a humongous kitchen, and you're still not disconnected. So if you doing something up there, you're still involved with what's happening in here because you're so, right there. So I've got a really important question that I'm sure people are going to want to know. How has it held up in the heat? Texas has had record heat this year. Yeah, I'm very aware. <laughs> now, that's why I'm asking you. You're full-time. I've gotten in past this, Chris. Thanks for pointing it out. Right? You, I mean, you've been full-time in the oven. You tell me how's so, it been. So, I mean, one of the things, and I didn't even notice this, and you didn't tell me this, but I didn't realize the back of these shades have a little bit of a reflective mm -hmm. surface. So that actually helps quite a bit. Um, it's still only going to do so much. So we went back with Reflectix in the big windows. Um, between that, the ACs kept up fine. Okay. Now we have three ACs and they all ran. Um, but we got to, what was the hottest it got? Like 119? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then those days, yeah, I mean, it, but it stayed at 75. They ran all day, but it stayed there. So nice. that's all I can ask for. Perfect. The insulation helps. That's I forget what the insulation on these it, is. It's R forty. It's R forty five in the subfloor. It's R forty in the roof. R eleven in the side walls of it. And so I mean, it's in the way that it's ducted. The RV airflow system that's in this. They're all three oh, ACs yeah. being fifteen thousand BTUs of AC. I mean, it's they, it keeps up. Um, yeah. No no questions. I'll say that in just terms of throwing in my personal favorite thing about this floor plan. This gold thing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that comes with every single one from the factory. Now my favorite thing. It, this is my favorite show rig because I like sitting up here. I'm not obtrusive as a salesperson in people's path, but that's something for as a, a RV owner to think about when you have your family, like you were saying, entertaining. Being up here, just having the view of everybody, you feel like king of the castle. And the only other rig that I've ever sat in that makes me feel like that is the uh, driver's seat of a diesel pusher. And so I, I love the king of the castle feel up here in your kitchen, elevated area. It's one of my favorite floor plans, hands down. Hunter mentioned this, but yeah, they actually come standard with the center AC on uh, with an RV airflow. So as far as the AC goes, put that mic up there and hold the oh. mic up towards the AC because the AC is running and it has been, yep. I think it's super quiet. So if you are looking for, these Coleman mops are really good ACs. Yep. All right, so last question before we shut this beautiful coach down. M-I-L-L-E-R-I-N, -L -L -E -I -I sorry. <laughs> it's Miller's in motion is what he's trying to spell, but he ran out of L's. I got distracted. Can I buy a vowel? No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Ryan, for taking the time to oh, walk well, us through. Oh, I thought there was another question. There, oh, the, okay, so you want the other question. Would you buy it again? Yes, with AK yeah. axles. <laughs> with AK axles. There you go, guys. Everybody knows that's the answer. Buy it with AK axles. Did everybody get the two cents about taking the two more run right, and that you can actually do Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much. Turn it around on oh, us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's flip it back around. Ow. Never mind. Again. You're done. All right. So we thought it's fun. Uh, Ryan met us down here at the show, the Dallas RV show. <laughs> the Southwest I'll go RV get that Super Show. And we just thought it'd be fun to show a perspective of a different rig and that our friend owns. Yeah, and somebody that's an expert in it because they live in it daily and they know what's good and what's not. And they know what they like and they don't like. And they know the things that you can't really uh, figure out when you're walking the showroom floor. So yeah. I hope this was fun. If you have questions, let us know. Yeah, so we're going to be here every day. So it ends on Sunday. So we'll be here today's Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If there's anything particular you want us to walk through, there are some alliances. So, of course, we're going to report over there. Um, we already had a pleasure of meeting Alan today. So yep. he reached out in the Alliance RV group. And, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Hit that thumbs up. Give us that like and subscribe, right? Got to do that. Thanks, guys. Enjoy every moment. Okay, good night. Well, Ryan, I, I told... <laughs>